into your hands. My name is Henri Kumpen. For the last decade, I've been making and selling my own creator-owned comics and dealing as a collector in live sales. My signature series, Yi Sun Shin, is the book that cannot be defeated in battle and has over a quarter million copies in print. Now I'm taking comics to the next level and laying the groundwork for my fellow creators to get their voices heard so they can connect directly with you. This is your chance to engage live with top comic book talent and get your comics signed without having to wait in long lines or pay any fees. But remember, we only have a limited amount of their books in stock. So always remember to... Call an ACC! You're watching Virtual Signings with Honor, the live event show. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Virtual Signings with Henri, the live event show. I am your host, Henri Kompen. It is great to be here with you guys today. I woke up this morning and thought to myself, you know what? We're going to be off the air for the next two weeks because we're working on a huge procurement goal. We're about to um, expand our entire collection um, by uh, a huge amount. So whatever we got already, we're about to double that. So it's going to be a pretty big uh, pretty big. Thing, pretty big plans are in the works here. So I decided to stack up today and spend some time with you guys and bring on two outstanding guests onto Virtual Signings with Honoring. So the first guest we have this afternoon is Joseph Schmalke. I'll be bringing him on in just a second. In a couple hours, I will be on the EXP. Um, if you guys uh, haven't checked it out, uh, you can do so right now. I just made a post right now of who our guest is going to be. We've got Kara Nicole coming on uh, in just uh, three hours from now. And after that, directly after a half hour after uh, Kara comes on, Kevin and I are doing a warehouse raid tonight on Kicking It with Honoree and Kevin, the live shopping show. We got dollar to three dollar comic bundles. We got trades. We got all kinds of stuff, keys, whatever it is you're looking for. Come shop with us. We're trying to clear out as much as we possibly can because we're going to be gone for the next two weeks. And we want to get as many comics out there into your hands as possible. And the best part is, after tonight, we will do all of our invoicing and we'll have all your stuff shipped out to you on Monday. So without further ado, let's bring our guest on here. He has got some incredible books. And let me tell you guys, I'm looking at him right now. These books, they are delicious. They look phenomenal. And the guy who created them has an extensive background working in entertainment. He's a solid dude. Um, and uh, I'm just going to shut up and bring him on board. Joseph. Welcome to Virtual Signings with Honor. How are you doing, brother? Good, man. How's it going? Doing fantastic. Dude, I've wanted to interview you and have you on here for such a long time, man. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a nice way to end the week, you know? For sure. All right. So, uh, Joseph, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, all that awesome stuff. Uh, so yeah, I am Joseph Schmalke and I'm the co-publisher of Black Caravan Comics, which is an imprint of Scout Comics. Um, we are a, uh, niche imprint that's based in horror, sci-fi, and the bizarre. So, um, right now we have some titles out or that are about to come out. We have, uh, Provenance of Madness. Some people it's hit shops, uh, some places it hasn't, but that's, a uh, a new title graphic novel that we've just released. It's um, HP Lovecraft inspired horror. We've got Black Friday, which is by John Clark. Um, it's about a like a Walmart superstore overrun with an ancient evil entity. And then I am the co-creator of The Electric Black. Issue three of that just came out this week of The Electric Black Presents, which is about a cursed antique shop that travels through time and space, uh, corrupting or devouring people at once. And then uh, I, I am the creator of Cherry Blackbird, The Infernal Pact, and We Don't Kill Spiders, which will be released in July. That's awesome, man. I So what we have today is uh, Cherry Blackbird and The Infernal Pact. Um, why, don't you, why don't we kick off with Cherry Blackbird, which um, this book looks incredible um just the artwork everyone this stuff is solid and so joseph you you write and illustrate illustrated this yeah i even lettered that book um so here's the deal with cherry blackbird um what you're holding there is a very limited edition run 
Um, I own the majority share of those books. Uh, the single issues are, are coming out starting in um, May. So you can pre-order that now. Uh, or you could be smart and buy the whole story today. Uh, that's it. Now, the difference that you're going to see between the single issues that come out in um, May and that book is that I hired a letterer to come on board because I'm not that great at lettering. I did it for the graphic novel, but uh, I felt like it was the weakest part of the entire book. So I've, I've hired Joel Rodriguez, who I, I worked with on Phantom Starkiller. He's come over and he's re-lettering all of um, Cherry Blackbird. So there are five variant, there are five covers altogether for Cherry Blackbird. If you wanna pop them up, I'll talk about them. Absolutely. So uh, let's, let's start with the first one. Okay. So that's my cover. It's a glow in the dark variant. Um, it's just, it looked, I wanted to make something that looked like a rock poster and I gave it like a vintage uh, design to it and everything like that. Um, so yeah, it glows in the dark. I drew it. That's the whole story. Uh, <laughs> and, and <laughs> Honestly, this has already been called Mike 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 Bankston. Uh, this is the standard cover. This is the one that you're going to want. And all these books, by the way, Joseph took the liberty of signing each and every one of them. Now, can you give us the pitch of Cherry Blackbird? Like, what's the story about? Yeah, yeah. So a uh, a girl sold her soul for fame and fortune, rock and roll, fame and fortune. At the age of 26, the devil comes to her and tells her that if she can send seven demons that escape from hell back to the abyss, then he'll give her a pass. If she can't send them back to hell by the time she turns 27, she'll be dragged to hell. And it's a grindhouse exploitation book, so there's lots of uh, sex, drugs, violence. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty graphic. Um, definitely is. mature reader. Yes, I, I'm, I'm just kind of gl glancing through it. This, guys, this is fantastic. So, like I said, this one's already been called by Mike and Trish. But if you guys want the standard cover, this is going to go for $20. Just let Joseph know. Everything's going to go through Joseph for for anybody who wants the standard cover. But we also got uh, uh, five other variants for this. Is it five or four, four other variants? Four, four more. Yeah. So let's okay. pop up the next one, and I'll tell you who did that. So that's by Mortimer Glum. Uh, the original title for the book was actually Horror Babylon, but I kept being asked to take my banner down at shows. So I changed the name to Cherry Blackbird. That particular cover was the only one where I kept the original dressing on it. Mortimer Glum was the artist of Escape from Jesus Island, which was this really awesome book that came out about three years ago. Unfortunately, it ended after issue four and Mortimer Glum no longer draws comic books. Wow. You actually, they actually asked you a convention, like, how did you react to that? Like, them saying, like, take your banner. I was down. like, all right, I, I'll get a different banner tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I had a couple of different ones. Um, I was trying to highlight the newest title that I would have, you yeah. know? No, of course. Um, I mean, like, were you, were you, um, were you surprised? Were you upset? Like, how did, like, what was your reaction to that? Because like, I would have been like, you know, I would, I understand I it. But, I think know. I joked with them a couple of times. I'm like, what's wrong with the word Babylon? You know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I get it. You know, uh, a lot of these events are family friendly for the mo most part. And I didn't want to, I, I get where they're coming from. So uh, just for the sake of it, making it to shelf space, uh, my wife had a long talk with me and she's like, I think you need to change it. And she's like, you know, it's an exploitation book. And she's like, you know, like, exploitation movies from the 70s had like a single name or something like coffee so i was like oh yeah well the, the main character's name is cherry blackbird and i thought sure enough the band's name is horror babylon that's what i was naming it after so there you go right on man okay so uh i uh you 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 told me the price on this because this is a variant um yeah all the variants are 30. these are so these are going for 30 they are signed by joseph as well and guys let me just tell you something about it the presentation of this book, like just me as uh, not the guy who had anything to do with this. This is just, I love books like this that you can just like hold in your hand and the print quality on this is sensational. Um, the, the feel of the book, like just kind of glancing through it, it's everything that anybody who's into horror would 
could could ever ask for. And there, there's, a, there's a cool story behind the printing of this book too. So it has a it has super matte finish on the covers, which everybody likes the feel of those. They are printed at six by nine, which is an uh, smaller than comic book size. But I did that on purpose. And then uh, the greatest part about it was on page one of it, there's this giant like dildo. And the company that was printing yeah. it does a ton of uh, printing for yearbooks and stuff like that. And I shouldn't say who they are because they'll get mad. But anyway, they couldn't print it in their main factory because it was too graphic. And they were going to have all these pallets of like giant dildos everywhere. So they uh, sent it off to a, a place that printed... Uh, biker mama porn in Texas. So they had to actually outsource the interiors to be printed elsewhere and then sent back to factory to be dressed. So that's the whole story there. That's pretty wild. All right, guys, <laughs> one copy of the Whore of Babylon variant. I can say whore on my channel. You can't say whore on yours. Um, <laughs> you got. We can say it here. Call it as you see it. We got this variant going for 30 bucks. Don't be afraid. No one will ostracize you. Um, if they do, I will ostracize them. That simply. So there we go. We got this variant. And then the next variant is done by one of my favorite artists of today. And he's one of your good pals. Tell us about this bad boy. Oh, yeah. Uh, ben Bishop did that cover. He actually, uh, his studio is down the hall here. We, we're in the same mill building. And uh, main. Uh, that's where our studios are set up. So uh, that's actually the first time that he he's ever drawn a boob on a cover. So uh, there's a little nipple action going on there, but it's a very yeah. artsy looking cover, you know? So, yeah, he's got, uh, he's got an artsy looking covered up areola too. It's pretty dope. <laughs> so I yeah, that covers by ben Bishop. Most, I think Ben Bishop draws the most detailed areolas in comics. <laughs> a little compliment there yeah he was he was trying to capture this sort of house i think he had just read house of leaves is what he was saying he's like i want to do something really artistic with it so i was like all right go for it man and that's why i think he put like he put like a cigarette in the corner or something yeah <laughs> Yo, man and uh you know one thing i want to talk to you about real quick um is the amount of uh you know, variants I've seen with your artwork on it. So, um, you know, as a comics creator, and, and but guys, by the way, this one is not just signed by Joseph. It is also signed by Ben Bishop. This one is going to go for 30 bucks, uh, the, the Ben Bishop variant. So just, just call it as you see it. Now, I've seen your work on a number of different books, like um, No Heroin uh, and, and a, a number of other titles that are just not coming to me at the moment, of course, because that's just how life is. But uh, you, you've done all these variants for, for uh, you know, you had all these variants done for, for books, uh, for your books. And did you have any kind of like, the, it, like, it seems like you have like a theme in mind, like going back to the Horror of the Babylon one, you know, it, it, do you think of themes or do you just kind of like let the artists kind of take it where they want to go with it? My personal approach when I get variants for my titles is to let the artists kind of run wild. They, they, you know, any artist that does a variant usually asks to see what the content is. So I'll always share that over in like character designs and things like that. Uh, but otherwise I don't give them too much direction. I always figure it's best to let them do their thing. Otherwise I wouldn't be working with them. Uh, there, there's been a couple of times where an artist is totally off the mark and I'm like, well, this is really what this is about and what you're doing has nothing to do with it. But that's why there's roughs ahead of time, you know, so you can, figure that stuff out. And typically what I do when I do a variant is I'll ask the publisher um, for an actual PDF of the issue because there's always like a story moment. And that's typically what I create my covers of is, is like I'm trying to encapsulate a moment of the story without giving it away or a really cool, interesting piece from the inside where I'm like, oh, that's such a, like if I show that on the cover, it's it's really going to be a cool poster. You know what I mean? So that's how I typically handle it. For sure. So, uh, you know, that I'm a beautiful man. He's asking how everything's going. Everything's going great. Uh, Mike James Bankston shared everything. Mike's our, you know, our big 
our big customer. We love him. Joseph Hardy is definitely interested in the book. We'll be ready to call it as you see it, folks. This is the time to, to do it. Um, and uh, Mike already called the, the book before the show. And Trish, Trish made a really great point. Um, to get these books now because of the fact that uh, Joseph's imprint has been picked up by Scout Comics, which means everything is going to be re-released now. These books, once they sell out, they're done. They're not going to be reprinted in this format anymore. Um, and even if they are reprinted, it's going to be under Scout's imprint now. So this is the time to get this stuff because uh, you won't be able to get it later. And, in fact, I almost kind of hope uh, we we're left with something because I could see the price of these books going up. Like, Cherry Blackbird has the kind of appeal that I think would make for a really great movie. And I could see this. I can see this happening pretty much with all of your uh, with all of your titles. Jack, what's happening, brother? Good to see you. It's been a while. Um, and uh, Trish was also saying that uh, uh, we started Mike on on no heroin, and he really likes that series. Something tells me you're really gonna like uh, Cherry Blackbird if you're a fan of uh, no heroin. Yep. And then there's the. The other covers I have there are my, uh, that one's by J.K. Woodward. He is known for doing um, Star Trek and uh, Heavy Metal Magazine. He did a book called Behemoth for Key Comics, I believe is what they were called. Uh, and then um, I'm trying to think of what the project is he's working on right now, but the guy's a total rock star. And I have the actual original cover back here somewhere. It's, it's a painting. It's awesome. So that those are the seven demons that uh, Cherry has to send back to hell. This is so cool. And guys, these are we uh, just so anybody who's tuning in right now knows we got uh, the original cover, which has already sold out on this show. But you guys can still call it. Joseph's got it, so you guys can call it right now. It's only twenty bucks, and we have these variants here going for thirty up. Each one of these books is signed by Joseph Schmalky, the guy who created, wrote, drew, and lettered this book. And honestly, you give yourself a hard time for lettering, but I think you did a pretty good job. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I think I think, think Rich Wood all got into my head. He's my co-publisher at, at Black Caravan, and uh, he got in my head about it. He's like, you're not good at this. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Tell yeah, me what he, he, he busts my balls a little bit. So it's all right. I mean, look, you know, lettering is an art unto itself, but I mean, it is, it, so, it is a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, and, the, the thing that I think can be appreciated about this the most is the fact that this is all you and that's what makes it unique. Like, yeah, the new books are going to be re-lettered and I think it'll provide a different experience, but like, this is you a hundred percent. And I think that's a really unique thing in comics because for the most part, every single comic is done by multiple people, you know, there's, yeah, it's, it's usually like a team of people. Uh, now I, I do use an editor, uh, regularly because I'm a horrible proofer and sometimes you just need, um, y you know, that, that extra set of eyes being like, Oh, that, that panel doesn't work from this page to this page. And like, you missed this part, that kind of thing. So I always hire the same guy. His name is Sean French. Um, he's my chronic editor. A chronic, so. editor. a chronic. Editor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then that one, that cover is done by Rich Woodall, my co-publisher at uh, Black Caravan, and we both signed that cover. Um. So yeah, he has the original title on there, Horror of Babylon, but he like did this sort of you know black tape over the top of it which I thought was kind of cool. He made it look like a Big Daddy Roth or something like that, like a rat fink, you know? That's what he wanted to do for that cover. This is super dope. And folks, we've got a rundown on Cherry Blackbird right now. I'm going to run, run you guys through the gamut one last time, and then we're going to keep going. If you guys are interested in hearing about it again, though, just ask. I can flip out. I can bust out these books anytime, and you will see them on the shopping show. Whore of Babylon, this variant of Cherry Blackbird, is going to go for $30. It is signed, and it is done by which artist again? Mortimer Glum. Mortimer, Mortimer Glum, you said? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, Mortimer Glum. This is a really dope cover. And again, the print quality on this is great. The the mat, the the super matte cover is awesome. I really love the way it feels. Just look at the 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 way the colors are popping off even through the computer screen. It is amazing. And just seeing it in person is a completely different experience. For $30, you are getting a deal. This is going to be a $100, $150 book in the next five to 10 years, guaranteed. The next variant we have is the Ben Bishop variant. This is going to go for $30 as well. Also, not only is it signed by Joseph, it is also signed by Ben himself. It's got its own feel to it. It is really awesome. If you guys are not familiar with Ben Bishop, he's a contributing artist to The Last Ronin right now. And he's got a ton of uh, different books that uh, he has worked on. And uh, just an incredible, incredible artist. Really great guy. Uh, this next variant right here, who is the artist who did this one again? J.K. Woodward. J.K. Woodward, yes. Um, I'm familiar with the name. I just uh, wasn't familiar with the style. But this is also just incredible. Like you found, what I really like is the thematic feel of all these variants. They are really, really solid. And um, it is just absolutely gorgeous. And this one is also going for $30. So call it as you see it. And finally we have Rich Woodall. Grant, which is done by Mitch Woodall, which is, uh, who is Joseph's uh, partner. A co-publisher, co, yeah, co-publisher, co and and me and him also uh, write and draw the electric black together. Awesome, awesome, and this one is also going for thirty dollars. So we got four variants in stock right now, guys. Call it as you see it. We got you covered. The regular cover, the first one. This is going to Mike. All right. So in the meantime, let's uh, we'll come back. We'll come back to Cherry Blackbird. It's not going anywhere. Let's uh let's go to the Infernal Pact. This looks really dope. And that cover glows in the dark as as well as the regular cover for Cherry Blackbird. So it's a it's a grindhouse exploitation book just like Cherry Blackbird is. It takes place in the same universe and it's about these three meth heads that uh jokingly sell their soul for drugs and wind up really cursed and uh they transform into uh werewolves and uh the two guys turn into a werewolf and the girl turns into this uh, gloom witch. And how I did the entire book was through um, etchings. So instead of me drawing it, I actually carved out all the uh, ink. So it's a little bit different style. There's like a hundred dicked monsters in it and demons and yeah. A <laughs> hundred dicked monsters, uh, yeah. awesome. <laughs> 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 this is really cool. And you know, I, I really, I read your bio um, when I was putting everything uh, to, together for, you know, to promote for, for today's show. And um, the one thing that I think is really cool about this is um, how you've uh, really kind of like kept, how you're capturing the feel of what you're trying to do so perfectly in comics. Like just, I haven't read your, I haven't read either of the books. Uh, I haven't read Cherry Blackbird but just from looking at the books and looking at the presentation, it's like you're doing exactly what you set out to do. And I think that's a, that's that in itself is an incredible feat, but these books in general is getting to this point is incredible. So, but so split decision comics published this. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Uh, well, me and Ben used to have a studio together and he's split decision. Uh, so we were under that same banner together. It's, literally the only split decision comic made that doesn't have uh, varying paths. It's just kind of like a, yeah, it was something that we made early on when uh, we started a studio together. And then, you know, he's moved on now to work on turtles and I'm doing black caravan. So uh, what are your plans for the infernal pact? Is this just the one and done deal? The only way to get that is going to be through me right now. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, what what the future holds for it? I, I it was an early project, and um, yeah, I think I think it's awesome, but I don't know if I want to really break it apart. You know, I like it in its presentation that it is right there. So, 
And this one is going to go for 20 bucks, folks. It is also signed by Joseph. I believe that Mike and Trish have called this as well. So I got you guys on on um, on the Infernal Pack, which means we're left with uh, four copies left in stock right now. But uh, if you guys are interested in picking them up from uh, Joseph, uh, you guys are welcome to hit him up as well, and uh, he will he will be able to do it. In the meantime, we got four copies. All right, so Joseph's calling the Infernal Pack as well. So we got that called. For Joseph. So we got that. And just so everybody knows, the Cherry Blackbird graphic novels are not for sale anywhere else right now. Uh, this is the only spot to get them. I've taken them out of my store, uh, which will be opening tomorrow. Uh, but Infernal Pact would be available later on. Uh, because Cherry Blackbird's being released as a five issue series that starts coming out in uh, May. So issue one comes out in May. Each issue is going to be polybagged um, because of the content of it. So it, it looks it looks absolutely it looks absolutely gorgeous, man. Like honestly the the presentation on all your books is just solid. Okay guys, we're down to three. Three copies of the Infernal Pact. Let's make this a sellout. Let's get three more of these sold, and let's get let's get Joseph to bust out some of the other stuff he's got here. And I mean, we, we can do that anyway. Um, but you guys can. Uh, so you want to zoom in on the? You want me to zoom in on the variants, Joseph? Absolutely. So I'll start off again with uh, the. Here's the here's the first variant. This is the Horror of Babylon variant from, uh, and that is signed by Mortimer Glum as well. Oh, okay. So these are this is signed by guys. Now, you, now there's no excuse. You got the creator of this, the writer, illustrator, all that jazz, and the artists who actually did the variants signing these as well. This is this is not an easy thing. You guys are going to have to travel all the way to Maine in order to get these books signed, and good luck getting it. So this is going to go for 30. Okay, so the Woodall variant is going to um, David Moore. Uh, this is the Woodall variant, right? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so David, I got you down on the Woodall variant. Outstanding. We're down to three variants left. Mr. Moore, I got you, my brother. Sure. And guys, keep in mind, we can work payment plans out. This is not a big deal. We're going to be off the air for a couple weeks as we're working on our pro procurement goals. So don't worry. We're not going to be pulling out. Like, you don't have to pay us tomorrow or after the show. You know, we'll, we'll send you an invoice. You guys got some time. We'll ship out as soon as you pay. It's really that simple. It's not a big deal. Side, and then I'm going to continue to show off um, uh, covers here. Now, David, I have a package going out to you today. If you want to cover this, that's cool. It's up to you. Um, in the meantime, let's go back to the other variant. So I showed off. Uh, th is this the more? This is the Mortimer one, right? No, nope, that's J.K. Woodward. Dude, I'm so sorry. I feel like a jerk. I, I'm. I'm. Right. I, I'm either really good with names or I'm really bad with names. So this is the Mortimer. The Whore of Babylon variant is the Mortimer uh, yep. variant. It is signed by him as well. It is going for $30. We only have three variants left. Three variants left, and we're sold out completely on the show. But you guys can still buy through uh, Joseph, and he will have his shop. Make sure you guys are reading what's going on in the comment section below or in the ticker below. Follow him on Instagram, and you I've seen you uh, totally kill it on your on your shows when you open up your shop. And we got this one. We got the Ben Bishop one. I highly recommend the Ben Bishop one because I'm a personal personally I'm a really big Ben Bishop fan and booster. It is signed by him as well. We got the most defined areola in comics right here. This is going one for 30 bucks. <laughs> you got whatever it takes to make the sale, right? And then finally, we got uh, the J.K. Woodward. J.K. Woodward. You told me already, and I forgot again. 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Names. That's are- all right, man. Yeah. So yeah, he's uh, again. He's known for doing heavy metal magazine. I've seen pictures of him with like H.R. Giger and stuff. I think he uh, used to hang out with him back in the day. And uh, he's a punk rock like type painter guy. Uh, he actually he just moved back to Maine. He was originally from Freiburg, so he's back here now. Right on, man. Okay, so we got three three variants left. Three variants left. Call it as you see it. And then we got three copies of – okay, so Joseph's calling the Mortimer. The Mortimer is gone. It's cool. Going to Joseph. Excellent. Hi, how are you feeling right now, Joseph? Do you feel like – you know, I know it's not the same thing. We talked a little bit about this. What we're doing right now, it's not the same thing as Comic-Con, but how do you feel right now seeing your work selling? I mean, you know, uh, what, what, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm doing all right. He's I'm good. doing all right, man. Good. Yeah. Um, where'd you go? Henri left. Just put the books away. There uh, we go. Oh. I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just put the book away. All right. So we're left with the uh, J.K. Woodward. I got it. The J.K. Woodward variant. We still got that. And we got the Ben Bishop variant. We got two of them left in stock. Each one is $30. We will have them no matter what. Call it as you see it. Let's get these books into your hands. Call it as you see it. We got you covered. And we'll go back to the Infernal Pack. And then I want to hear about other stuff you got in the works in more detail. And the Infernal Pact, you get this book right here. It is published by Split Decision Comics, the original imprint that uh, Joseph started with um, Ben Bishop. Well, actually- it's Ben Bishop's. Oh, it's, it's Ben, ben Bishop. Bishop. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 was just, it, it was public. Yeah, ben Bishop. Does, uh, kinda, all right. There's only two books oh, through right. that imprint right now. Uh, it That would be one of them, sort of as like a soft uh, release. And the other one is his book, The Aggregate. Yeah. That's nice. the other split decision comic. Yes. We, we have sold The Aggregate on our show. And so, you know, we're, we're real big fans of that. So, Guys, this book is very special. If you're into sex, drugs, and damnation, The Infernal Pact is your uh, jam right here. Each book is signed, going for only 20 bucks, which is the cover price. You're getting a signed book for cover price. That is a deal. We got three of these left, and we got two of the Cherry Blackbird variants left in stock. Let us know if you want them. We will put them aside for you. So, Tell us a little bit more now about what else you got going on. Um, so I just finished uh, the artwork, the the interiors for Count Draco Knuckle Duster, which is the uh, sequel to Phantom Starkiller. And if you don't know what Phantom Starkiller is, it's a book we put out, um, I think, in July. No, October well, of last year. When you had the, uh, the ash can and, and then uh, October is when... When we actually put the book out. Um, so that is based on a uh, toy created by Peter Gorrell, who calls himself Killer Bootlegs. So me and him teamed up and created uh, the comic book about the, it, it was kind of like reverse engineering where the toy came first and then the story came afterwards. Uh, so yeah, people have been waiting for a while for the sequel and it, it's done, but we have to wait until we're releasing it around the same time that San Diego comic con was supposed to happen. So that's when that's coming out. And I'm also finishing, I'm putting the final touches on my new book, which is called we don't kill spiders, which is a a story about a a Viking detective uh, trying to solve a serial murder. And he enlists the help of a necromantic witch. And it all takes place in the early Viking age. And then um, this just came out. Uh, Electric Black uh, Presents number three, which is uh, written and illustrated by me and Rich Woodall. And it's a, um, this is pretty much a horror anthology series, this mini series within the Electric Black world. And it's all about um, side stories of the main characters. So on the cover here is Junebug and she's, uh, she works in the Electric Black and it's her origin story. And then uh, this is 
This is a holographic edition of Phantom Star Killer, which will be in my shop tomorrow for anybody that missed out on that through Comics Blend. I also will have variants of this, which were done for Comics Tom of Forever Maps, the Forever Maps, which is uh, a series that just got picked up for development in Hollywood. So that's pretty cool, you know. Um, and then I just did the, this cover, this variant for Noctera. If you guys haven't checked out this series, it's amazing. It's uh, like post-apocalyptic. Lights have to be turned on or these monsters will swarm in and like wipe you out. So all that will be on my shop tomorrow. So yeah. tell, us, tell us a little bit about your shop. Like what, uh, do, you, what do you do? Do you just... Uh, do you yeah, just so because I'm a publisher and a, and a creator... Um, I can't ship all the time. I, it, I choose one day a month to do all my shipping. So I keep my store, my, my shop hours limited. I only, typically I only open my store for two days a month and that's it. And then I close it down. And that way there's always new material in there. I, I sell my, all my original artwork that I have for sale will be available through my, my store, which is typically uh, covers like this Noctera the original artwork for that will be available tomorrow. Um, and then we have uh, one uh, limited edition print that we just did for my book that I, I typically just write this book. It's called Murder Hobo. Uh, but I did a set of connecting covers for it. So uh, we made a risograph print of the connecting covers. And those are all signed and numbered by uh, me and Jason Lynch who's the co-creator on that book. He does all the character designs and artwork and stuff like that. So, so yeah. Mike, Mike, Mike uh, James is asking, do you sell prints like core Babylon print? Um, well, uh, I try to stay away from like print wall type stuff. And I, I'm trying to stay away from characters that I don't own anymore. So um, I'll show you the murder hobo one. Uh, actually, and and Joseph, if someone wants to call that right now, is that okay with you, or do you want to wait? Oh, until sure. Yeah, there were only um, there were only a hundred of these made, and like I said, they are a risograph print, so it's not a typical print. Like this is hand mixed inks and stuff. And if you don't know what a risograph is, you can look it up. I don't have enough time to explain it, but. Uh, <laughs> As you can see, they're all signed and uh, numbered by me and Jason, who's the co-creator of uh, Murder Hobo. And these uh, inks on it are pretty vibrant too. Yeah, I wanted to do, like for prints and stuff like that, I wanted to make it uh, more like an actual piece of artwork. You know, uh, a lot of these prints and stuff that you see at, at shows, you can print them into oblivion. You can make 5,000 pictures of Spider-Man that you drew or something like that, but I don't want to do that. I want, to, I want you to actually get some value for what you're getting. So these were exclusively a limited edition run. There was only a hundred of them made. They're all signed and numbered. They're $20 each. There you go. And if you're into uh, dark comedy and uh, raunchy over the top humor, it's kind of like, a, I don't know. It's been compared to Rick and Morty, but I think Rick and Morty is smarter than Murder Hobo in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> Modest. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, so that, that's, so, that's so, one of the first prints that I've had available. Besides, and I have a Phantom Star Killer print available as well. Can you show us that? I want to see the Phantom Star Killer. Yeah. Can yeah. Let me see. It. I wanted to ask you a question about Phantom Star Killer because, like, honestly, that book sold. I have never, ever in my life seen a creator owned title sell the way that book did. The amount of craziness and the amount of anticipation that went into that into that series, like, literally everywhere you, every store you called up, either sold out of this book or was down to their last few copies and limiting people. I mean, the last time I saw anything like that happen was The Last Ronin, when The Last Ronin 1 came out. And it yeah, was um, the, uh, the hype behind it, well, Peter is a pretty popular guy anyway. So 
um, when he came on board, I knew that like the, the toy following was going to, was going to come into it. Um, but the toy itself, I have, the toy itself, uh, was such a big hit. I mean, it sells out like five hours after it goes up on super seven site, they're like out of them. So we didn't know if there was going to be a translation from toy to comics, but it, it certainly seems like there was, you know, and, and we had so many talented artists come on and do variants for it. We had like Christian Tabari, uh, Ryan G Brown, my studio mate, Jason Lynch, uh, Ben Bishop did one. Um, and then, uh, you know, for New York Comic Con, we had this guy, Wizard Cleave, who's not typically a comic book artist, but his cover like blew up. So yeah, it was a cool experience for all of us. We, you know, it's one of these things, you don't know if something's gonna be a hit. You try things and uh, you hope for the best. And we were just really, you know, I think we made something really cool, but I think everything I make is cool. I'm just, the audience really determines whether or not it's gonna be a hit, you know? And the audience just took to it because I think the design of the character is is pretty flawless. You know, he, he hits on a lot of nostalgia that uh, people identify with. You know, like he's been compared to Darth Vader and uh, Skeletor and like all these other things. So, yeah. And, that you know, we, we took that nostalgia and we built a new universe out of it. Um, so I want to speak to a couple things that you just said and go back to some of the things that um, uh folks commented on. So, you know, Mike is saying Spawn sold pretty crazy. Spawn still sells pretty crazy, but I don't consider Spawn, even though it is creator owned technically, you know, you got, you got star power bringing that book together, even when it first came out. I mean, Todd McFarlane mm -hmm. was really like one of the hottest artists in comics when Spawn came out, he had major leverage and Spawn just sells. I mean, it's, it's awesome. It's another thing. I think when you got someone like Joseph coming in with their own unique idea, and turning it into something that that is selling, I, I think it's an extremely hard thing to do. And I I, I really love what um, how Phantom Star Killer came to be. Like just how, all the different things that were available around that book. It was almost like the release of of Star Wars. You know, like when Star Wars came out, there was like all this this kind of like uh, hype around it, but there was also all this kind of merchandise. There was all kinds of merchandise and all kinds of stuff surrounding it, and it really is kind of like such a different project compared to like everything else that you you're, you're sharing with us. Uh, otherwise and the titles of your books, which are much more raunchy and dark and all this stuff, which brings me to uh, the next comment, which has come from Mr. Hardy, uh, who's asking you a question. Do you happen to be a fan of the garbage pail kids? I, uh, yeah, I mean, I collected them when I was a kid. I had pretty much all of C series one through three, I think when I was, you know, in elementary school. Um, but it's one of these things, you know, I think I put it into a closet somewhere and then it, over time it like got lost. My parents moved around a bunch. So yeah, no, I loved Garbage Bell Kids. I mean, every kid in my, uh, at, at my age did, you know, there you go. <laughs> they were gross. And uh, yeah, I, I remember the whole Cabbage Patch fad when that was happening, like the people were beating the shit out of each other, you're trying to get them at stores. And so it just seemed like it just, God damn, he's loud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just seemed like a uh, anti cabbage patch. And at the time, you know, uh, I liked that. So, I never even got the concept of cabbage patch kids. Like they, it, they I think kids. adults liked it more than the kids did in a lot of ways, like a lot of grown. Uh, well, and the other thing was I was living in the Midwest at the time I was living in Minnesota and um, it just seemed like a lot of uh, my mom's female friends that were older had them, but not a lot of kids I knew that had them. So I don't know. It was a weird collector thing at the time the eighties made some, some odd stuff. Um, my pet I rock. You... yeah, yeah. D they had a, my pet lump of coal too one year at Christmas and like that sold like hotcakes. I remember my brother got it because he was kind of an asshole. So. Well, you know, I think the eighties, they, a lot of the marketing has become like so nostalgic to like, 
you know, I, I see so much stuff, but particularly, especially with Phantom Star Killer too. Like, you know, how you guys did the VHS cover and that one, like, you know. Well, that 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 was the uh, what happened was that was a happy accident. We had um, submitted for distribution of a one in ten incentive cover, right? And uh, somewhere along the line, a ball got dropped. It was never submitted for an incentive cover. And um, I don't think it was anybody in particular's fault. It just, sometimes this kind of thing happens. And uh, so the president at Scout had created this new program called a VHS variant. And he had done it with a book called Everglade Angels. And what they were doing was every 10 or 20 copies, I can't remember, They'd remove one they, at the print house. They'd remove one of the copies and insert a secret VHS. So if you got a stack of twenty, one of those was going to be a different cover. So it was like a thank you to the stores because they got something a little bit extra, and for the fans, it became like this way for them to run around and, and find this secret thing. And so we did that with Phantom Star Killer as well. I think the the print run was a little bit. Uh, I can't remember if it was higher or lower than Everglades, but yeah, you had to get like at least 10 or 20 copies and then, then a shop would get one of those. So it was a cool, it was a cool thing for us to like be able to reach out to some stores that we knew were getting multiple copies and we're like, Hey, just so you know, keep your eye out for this. Sometimes we wouldn't say anything and they'd just be like, you know, people would get lucky and like it would just be on the shelf next to the, the regular edition. Cause the shop was like, I don't know what this is. So. Right on. Just a cool thing to do. Joseph's got another question. Oh, we got Ship in the house. What's up, Ship? All right. Joseph's also asking another question to you. Do you feel like you have any specific influencers that inspired your art style? Uh, yeah. I mean, early on, um, Mike Zek, I was uh, I really loved everything he was doing on uh, Amazing Spider-Man and The Punisher. Um, and then... Uh, Frank Miller, you know, um, Todd McFarlane. I, I really liked all the uh, the guys that ran over to Image. I mean, they, it was exciting when those guys first came out. You know, it was so different um, and a lot more action than I was used to. And then uh, over time, like I started to really study uh, Bernie Wrightson. And um, so, yeah. It, it's an eclectic thing, you know, you get your inspiration from all sorts of sources. I always keep like a Koi Pell on my table because he does things in this very like, like he's effective, but he keeps it simple. He doesn't overcomplicate a panel. And so sometimes if I'm getting in my own head and I can't figure something out, I'll figure out how Koi Pell did it. You know, I'll kind of like study what he's doing. And then I always keep a Bernie Wrightson on my table too just to figure out shadow and light because he was like the master of that. Absolutely. That's awesome. So we got ship in the house. Ship is all about supporting uh, independent creators, people who are doing their thing. So I'm going to just give a quick rundown real quick, Joseph, if you don't mind. And then I got, I got a question for you because you're, you, you're a guy who's got it together. And I, I I'm just, I, I have, I could, I could talk to you. I could pick your brain all day, but I think you would uh, want to strangle me by the time it would be done. But <laughs> in the meantime, ship, this is what we got here. We got cherry blackbird, which is a book that has been published by uh, Joseph. Schmalke. That was put out by me. Yeah. Put out by I, I was just putting those out myself. Yeah. It has now been picked up since by scout. So Scout is going to be releasing these as single issues now. So this is your chance to get the, uh, the, the uh, both. Uh, well, we have these are variant. These are the two variants we have left. We have the Ben Bishop variant, and this one is going for thirty bucks. And then we have the uh, J.K. Woodward uh, variant, which is also going for thirty dollars. These it's the same book. It's just two variant covers, and it's really solid stuff. Um, it's basically about a rock star who has a year between her 26th and 27th birthday to kill a bunch of demons. I am really looking forward to reading this. I have not had a chance to do it, but uh, it is printed on six by nine paper. It's got a matted cover and it is absolutely gorgeous. How you're seeing this on screen right now really does not do it justice. 
And it's the best part is it's signed by both the artist who uh, drew the variant and Joseph himself. And he did everything from writing and illustrating to lettering the actual book. And now that Scout has picked it up, Joseph has actually uh, brought on uh, a letterer that he works with on Phantom Starkiller to re-letter the book. So this is a chance for you to enjoy Joseph's original uh, version of this, get it in in its most uh, you know uh, pristine form, I would say. And then we have the Infernal Pact. We got three copies of this left. Some uh, really cool stuff about sex, drugs, and damnation. And we got three copies left. Each one is going for 20 bucks. They are all signed by Joseph as well. I highly, highly, highly recommend picking this up. Um, so let us know if you're interested. I will set one of anything aside for you, Ship. And um, Joseph, I'm going to ask you a question now, man. So sure. we were talking a little bit backstage before we went live. You were telling us, uh, you were telling me a little bit about how your day, you were kind of talking about your day a little bit about how, you know, some of it is allocated to business and then some of it is allocated to art and then the rest is promotion and whatever else you got going on. So how much time do you spend actually like being creative throughout the day? And what do you do on days when you're just not feeling it and you know, you got to push it out and you know, you got to get something out there. Um, well, you know, I, I'm on a timeline all the time. So, uh, and I'm my own boss, right? So if I don't kick my own ass, no one's going to do it. And the way that I've found to be most successful is even when you're having an off day to just push through and uh, finish what I've started. So um, most days, even if I'm not 100% on what I've done, I at least try to hit that marker that I've set for myself every day. So typically um, my markers could be that I have to do pages for an interior of a book. And if I'm on that particular day, I have to do a page every day that I'm working. So that's my marker for the day. Even if it's not a great page, I can usually go back to it like a day or two later and fix whatever the problem is. But m most of it is just like push through and you will hit that day where everything starts to click. And when everything starts to click, you can go back and fix the crap that you screwed up before. Um, I'm, I'm a person that's always moving forward. I don't get trapped. Uh, you know, if you need to, you get up, you walk around, you take five minutes for yourself or whatever. You do breathing exercises. You go eat a snack, uh, drink a bottle of water, something to get out of your own headspace and then rethink the situation if you're stuck. On the days when I'm writing, I can typically write a comic book um, from beginning to end within two days to a week. Uh, and that's 22 to 24 pages. Um, I don't really put a timeline on it because sometimes it's one of these things where it will, for Murder Hobo in particular, uh, that one I, I'll probably you know, pump out a story once or like, it'll take me two days to like get a, a story out or something like that. Cause it's all little short and stuff like that, that we're doing right now. But I have a sounding board right here for it. Jason, my, the co-creator, like if he doesn't think it's funny, I'll scrap it and start over, you know? So that, that's another thing too. It, it helps to have um, somebody else that you can bounce ideas off of before it was like me, Ben Bishop and this guy, Dylan Andrews, we all shared a studio together. So it was really easy to turn and be like, hey, there's something wrong with this page. You know, what am I doing wrong? Uh, so I think it's good to team up with people and share a, a space with people. My wife is also a huge comic book fan and she is uh, my hardest critic. Uh, she does not just kiss my ass and tell me everything I'm doing is great. She like will really pick things apart. So um, at the beginning of the pandemic, when our studio dissolved with me, Ben and Dylan, I had moved back into my house and that's where my studio was. So it was really easy for me to just like turn around and there's Hillary, you know, my wife, and I could just be like, Hey, you know, what do you think of this? Or how does this sound? You know? And she, you know, we could bounce back and forth on that. So it's always good to have a sounding board. So what's it like being married to a comic fan? Because, you know, I'm married to someone who's like anti comics, anti, like <clears throat> doesn't get it. 
kind of a thing. And for me, I've, I've always found it uh, kind of in some ways that aspect of my marriage to be kind of difficult because it's like I come home and I have to kind of like just completely forget everything about comics and leave it out, outside the door, you know? How is my, it? My, my wife is a really well-read person. She's very smart in all the ways that I am not. And um, so I don't know. I mean, it, I, I always wanted to do this, you know, what I'm doing right now. And early on when we first started dating, you know, it was like, she was kind of into all the same crap that I was into. We were both watching like Angel and, uh, you know, reading comics and stuff like that. So it, she's not a superhero person, mind you. She hates that crap, but she loves, um, you know, like Bitch Planet's like one of her favorite books, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, we all have our tastes and whatnot. And I will say this, like, I'm a horror fan, right? I like all this heavy metal horror stuff like that that is not her cup of tea at all and so you know she's like country music that's and show tunes but you know you don't have to have everything in common as long as there's like she just gets you know she gets what i'm trying to do and so she can get it give me that critical eye at those times but i i will say this when i'm you know making electric black and we don't kill spiders it's She's not really that interested in it. She's just helping me like get over these humps that I'll sometimes these roadblocks and stuff that I'll hit. So we got Michelle. She wants infer she wants a set of books. So we got Infernal Pact. I got another one of those sold. And then Michelle, we got two variants for uh, Cherry Blackbird. I have the Ben Bishop variant. This is going to go for thirty. And then I have the J.K. Woodward. That's also going to go for thirty. It's the same book. It's just different variants. It's signed by both Joseph and the artists who contributed uh, to it. So let me know which one of these variants you want. Each one is going for 30. We are down to the last four, uh, three minutes of the show, and it looks like we're down to uh, two and two. I think we did pretty good, Joseph, and um, I'm not surprised in the least bit. Um, so she wants both. Cherry Blackbird is sold out. This is fantastic. I'm so happy we got... Two copies of uh, Infernal Pact left. Two copies left, and we are uh, we are done. Um, but you guys will be able to go on Joseph's Instagram tomorrow. Be sure to follow him right now. You guys see it on the ticker below. Uh, follow him on Instagram. And uh, Michelle, thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming back um, and 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 shopping with us. And I will get you guys invoiced as quickly as I can. I'm going to try and get everything uh, taken care of by uh, the end of the weekend so that on Monday morning I can ship out to you guys. And then we're going to have our final two shows on Monday. And then we are off the air for two weeks. So, Michelle, I got you covered. Um, Joseph, any last words you want to say before we, we part ways, my friend? Uh, no, I mean, this was fun. Thanks for having me on. And um Thanks everybody for checking out our stuff and my stuff and uh, you know, make sure you check out all the other titles that I'm currently publishing through black caravan. Um, we have uh, Providence of madness coming out either this week or next week. And then um, we have perhaps knots coming up. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled on all the stuff we're putting out. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Schmalky, if you got like a couple minutes afterwards, I'd love to just, you know, talk with you uh, backstage. I'm going to close sure. up the show right now. Just hang out and I will be right back with you. All right, my brother. Yep. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. So there you have it, folks. What a great guest we had on today. Thank you so much for coming on. So today's kind of a crazy day because uh, we still got two more shows we're doing. I'm going to be on the EXP in just two hours, I got Karen Nicole on there, and I got Fire Bitch, number one in stock. Everything's signed. You can come and call it as you see it. And then on top of that, afterwards, we're going to be on, and we're doing a warehouse raid tonight on Kicking It with Henri Kevin, the live shopping show. This is a last-minute thing. I'm going to be digging through our long boxes and pulling out a bunch of $1 to $3 comics, and I'm going to bust out some trades. And... Um, we're gonna. We're just gonna kill it tonight. We're gonna have a good time. So come and hang out with us. 
what else is there to do on Friday right now? You can't go to no clubs. You can't go to no restaurants. You got to just come and hang out with us and buy your comics. So we will see you guys on the EXP. If you don't know uh, how to uh, like the EXP, just check out my Facebook and you will see that there is a link tree and you can you can follow our show um, through any of those. And we'll be on at 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Mountain Time, 6 p.m. Central and 7 p.m. Eastern. Come kick it with us. We're going to have a great, great time with Kara. And then we're going straight into comic slinging. So we will see you guys very, very soon. I am off to ship out some comics. So I will see you guys later. Take care. And I will see you in just two short hours.